to the code red. It's Stranger Things 3. Uh, you know, obviously fans have been super excited for this ever since they announced the date, uh, July 4th. So what can fans expect? Bigger, more powerful, more intense, and more terrifying than season one and two combined is how I look at it. Yeah. I think that's all in, all encompassing. Yeah. I think it's just, yeah. it's so true to, I think, as any fan would want, the extrapolation of the story and um, the heightened stakes and the budget's bigger. And, but it's still so special. Yeah, yeah. so moving. I was talking the other day about how moving it is. Yeah. The, 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 the relationships between the, 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 the kids. We yeah. call them kids, they're teenagers now, but it's very, very touching, their mm -hmm. bond and what happens to them in this season. And I truly believe, and I, uh, just to add on that, I truly believe that for me as an actor playing in a f film or a TV show, if I'm sitting on my couch experiencing the same level of escapism that I have when I watch something that I'm not associ associated with at all, yeah. then it's working. Yeah. For me, because I, I'm, I was behind everything, totally. but yet I'm watching there completely dissociated right. from that experience and getting lost in the escapism. And I think that's the unique thing about this project Yeah, for me. Yeah, well said. So, Carrie, you play a, a sleazy, the sleazy Mayor Klein. What can you tell us about your new character? Well, yeah, he's, he's very sleazy. He's very self-centered, egotistical politician. We've never seen any of those, right? And uh, fun to play, obviously. He's a guy who cares more about his popularity than, than the community as a whole. And so he's a good foil for Hopper, who obviously deeply cares about Hawkins. And uh, yeah, a lot of fun. And if you turn on the television any night of the week or go on Twitter, you can see his character also playing out real, sure. <laughs> in real, real life. life. <laughs> That's for darn sure. Yeah. Daker, how do things change for Billy? I mean, uh, spoiler alert, not a lot of people really liked him too much. I yeah, <laughs> no, I understand. So how do things change for Billy uh, in Stranger Things 3? The story arc. It's just huge this season. It's everything I could have wanted as, a, as an actor to be written for a character that I'm lucky enough to play. Um, they just get to see this crazy side of Billy's story explode into all different parts of the unknown. And, and it was exciting. And, and after having watched it, I'm very, very happy with what we did. Are, are people going to love to hate him more after they watch Stranger Things 3? <laughs> No running on my watch. I gotta warn you again and you're banned for life. You wanna be banned for life? Didn't think so. I think you have to watch the final episode to make a full decision about that. <laughs> <laughs> so Stranger Things came out of the blue a couple summers ago and really took hold and people really fell in love with it. Why do you think it connected the way it has with audiences? Well, I think it's what we sort of touched again on earlier, which is it's that cross demographic thing. I think it's the children, the adolescents and the adults. So everyone has someone that they can connect with. The nostalgia factor, mm -hmm. I think, is obviously the most commonly relevant example to answer your question with. But I think it's, it's, it's funny. We, we were just trying to pick it apart before about what makes it truly special. And I think you had that great example about it just being real. Yeah. Like a, a really nuanced performances, sure. nuanced storylines that and are real. Nuanced characters. Oh. You, you know, the Duffers <clears throat> have made you so invested in these characters because yeah. they know them so well and they've cast them perfectly, not talking about myself, but... And so we're so invested in them that when something bad happens, you deeply care about them. And that, I think, separates it from being just the run-of-the-mill kind of science fiction type horror show mm -hmm. you know what i mean because we follow these characters from season to season and we're watching them grow yeah and so now we care about them deeply they're like our own family now I and mean, we yeah. people can point to them go i know that's my brother or that's my cousin or this and this. you know that people can totally latch on to these characters and see something of them of people they know uh you know to jump off on that you know when sean astin's bob died yeah, uh, in, devastating. It was devastating. Are we going to see something that devastating? You know, you have to wait and see. Three? There's a lot going on. <laughs> it's bigger, more powerful, more intense and terrifying than season one and two combined, Yeah, is what I tell folks.